Hello and welcome to Saurabh's classes. My name is Ashmita and in today's class we are going to discuss about this INLAC scholarship. Now this scholarship basically provides the opportunity to all the young people with exceptional talent in most fields to broaden their vision abroad and uh, also to improve their skills to operate in the society, thus making them a future vehicle of change in the environment. This scholarship application is mostly open in the month of February and gets over by the time March end. Before moving over to the discussion of the scholarship, first you all should know what is the scholarship all about. Since the year 1976, Inlak Shivdasani scholarships have been granted to the Indian students to read at top rated American, then UK, then European institutions at a, like in a full time master's programs as well as in MPhil in doctoral programs. Now, this INLAC scholarship is awarded up to USD 100,000 to cover the program tuition as well as the scholars' living expenses, health care, and also one way airfare. This, the foundation has joint scholarship arrangements with Imperial College of London, then the Royal Art College of uh, London, then the University of Cambridge, and uh, and other other science uh, four colleges in. Uh, Paris. The foundation gives scholarships in a variety of subjects but does not fund business and finance. Then it doesn't finance um, uh, computer science, it doesn't include engineering, it doesn't include fashion design, it doesn't include management studies, it doesn't include hospitality and tourism, it also doesn't include Indian studies without contemporary relevance. It also doesn't consider uh, subjects like medicine, dentistry and related therapies. It also doesn't contain music and public health. So apart from all these, if you are by, by chance interested in some other subject, then only you can get the scholarship. Let me tell you which subjects are accepted for the scholarship. First is, uh, uh, first of all, there are various subjects, but the special subjects that are accepted include engineering and natural sciences. Now, this is only one subject and it is uh, accepted at the Imperial College in London. Then you have this uh, documentary filmmaking. This subject is accepted and uh, Western classical singing is also accepted under the scholarship. The maximum funding which is given by this foundation is USD 100,000. If the total funding which is required to complete the proposed course of study exceeds this amount at that time of the application, candidates must show evidence that they can cover the additional costs on their own. Applications which are made to the Imperial College of London, the Royal College of Art, that is the RCA in London, then the University of Cambridge, that is the Cambridge Trust and Sciences Po in Paris, will benefit from the additional funding through the Foundation's joint scholarships with these institutions and can definitely exceed the USD 100,000 limit while making an application. Acceptance of other awards and teaching assistantships and part-time jobs are welcome if even if your application to the foundation is successful. So applicants are required to report additional funding sources to the fund to the foundation when they are received. A candidate's proposed course of study cannot require field trips to India during the study tenure. And if the scholarship does not commence within the nine months of the award, it will be forfeited. Obviously, there is a certain eligibility criteria that you need to fulfill to get this scholarship. What all are those? Now, I have already mentioned about the subjects which are not included in the scholarship and also which are included with special reference in this uh, under the scholarship. So what are the basic eligibility criteria that you need to fulfill? In Lex Shivdasani scholarships are open to all the Indian citizens, first of all, who have been continuously resident in India for at least six months prior to the time of application. Candidates who are Indian citizens and hold an undergraduate degree from a recognized institution abroad that meets the academic standards must have resided continuously, been employed or have been studying in India for at least the last two years uh, prior to the time of application are also eligible. Candidates having a postgraduate qualifications, uh, like for example, master's program they have completed or PhD program they have completed from an institution abroad, are not eligible to apply under the scholarship. 
Candidates who have already begun their postgraduate education at an institution abroad are not eligible to apply under the scholarship. It is definitely essential to have prior admission to the institution and the course chosen at the time of the application. The foundation will not consider candidates without evidence of admission. Candidates who have an English language certification as a conditional part of the offer letter need to attain that certification before applying for the scholarship. Candidates who have received a deferred offer of admission must have a valid offer for the academic year uh, of 2022 to 2023 to be eligible for the 2022 scholarships. Candidates must be a maximum, maximum of 30 years of age in the year of application. For social sciences, humanities, law, fine arts, architecture and related subjects, candidates must have a minimum academic grade of 65%, CGPA 6.8 or GPA 2.6 from a recognized university of ins or institution. Uh, for mathematics, for sciences, for environment and related subjects, candidates must have a minimum academic grade of 70%, CGPA 7.2 or GPA 2.8 from a recognized university of, or, or institution. As I told you, the application timings is between February to March. And for this year, it's already closed. Uh, so you can try it for the next year. Uh, if you meet the eligibility criteria, the application process involves uh, that the application must be made online. Uh, the candidate must have a valid passport to apply. Only one submission per candidate will be accepted. Online portal will not accept applications that do not meet the academic and the financial eligibility criteria, which I have already mentioned before. And uh, two letters of reference are mandatory and one must be from an academic referee. Candidates must provide an official email address for both the referees. For applications made on the last date of closing of the application forms, the reference link will be valid for seven days post the submission till 6th of uh, April the next month. What is the selection procedure that is followed for, uh, for uh, taking admission under this uh, scholarship? An independent in lack selection committee is first of all appointed to select the successful applications for the scholarships. Then applicants are judged on not only their past or present achievements, but also on their future potential. Candidates applying for the scholarship in art and design, that is in fine arts or in performing arts, will be judged primarily on the basis of their portfolios. The selection process involves three stages, review of the eligible applications, then second is the primary interviews with candidates chosen from this review, third is a final interview with those who succeed in the preliminary round. Candidates who do not receive any communication from the foundation by mid of May, that is the mid of May month, must assume that their applications have not been successful. So that's it. And that was the entire discussion about this INLAC scholarship. Uh, if you want to get the scholarship, you need to fulfill all the, all the eligibility criteria and then only you can apply. So that was the entire discussion for today's class. We're going to meet once again in our next classes.